fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What is the spirit of Christmas? Notice I said, what is the spirit of Christmas? Not spirits. Some of you might be saying, I know what the spirits of Christmas are, Pastor. My uncle likes to spike his eggnog. Some might be thinking, I know what the spirits of Christmas are, Pastor. Well, there is the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, and the ghost of Christmas yet to come. No, I'm not talking about those spirits. I'm talking about the spirit of Christmas. For some, the spirit of Christmas is being jovial and cheerful during the holiday season. For some people, the spirit of Christmas is about giving. It's about charity. For some, the spirit of Christmas is about peace. Peace between countries and races and neighbors and even political parties. For some, the spirit of Christmas is found in children and their excitement and anticipation for Christmas morning. For some, the spirit of Christmas is found in family and togetherness. These spirits of Christmas, you can say, each one of these spirits have validity to themselves. They are all good things. We receive them with thanksgiving from God. We can enjoy them and even treasure them. But please note that each one of the spirits of Christmas that I just mentioned can be enjoyed without any connection to Jesus Christ. You can say the spirit of Christmas is giving and not even know Jesus at all. You can say the spirit of Christmas is family and not be a believer, a believer in Jesus. Note that all those spirits, once again, these spirits of Christmas exist they can exist without a connection to Christ. But there is one spirit of Christmas that never tires of making connection with Christ. And that spirit of Christmas is not a thing or a feeling or an action or a sentiment. That spirit is a person. That person is the Holy Spirit. He is the ultimate Christmas spirit. He is the ultimate spirit of Christmas. Did you catch our text today? The angel comes to Mary and says something's going to happen so she will conceive and give birth. And what's going to happen? The Holy Spirit's going to come down on her. And it's the Holy Spirit who makes the miracle of the conception and birth of Jesus Christ happen. It's the Holy Spirit that does it. We talk about the God, the Father, sending the Son. And of course, we talk about the Son at Christmas, Jesus being born. But when you think about it, the Holy Spirit has an immense part of Christmas. Without the Holy Spirit conceiving baby Jesus in the womb of Mary, the Virgin Mary, we would not have our Savior. We would not have the God-man. We would not have our substitute before God who lives a perfect life in our place and suffers the punishment that we deserved on the cross. We would not have a flesh and blood Savior who actually comes to us with his flesh and blood in the Holy Supper. We would have no true Christmas without the Holy Spirit. He is the true and the greatest spirit of Christmas. Without the Holy Spirit then, conceiving Jesus in the womb, making this Son of God who was there from eternity, making that second person of the Trinity 
who had no beginning. He always was. He's eternal. Actually giving him a beginning in the womb of Mary. Making this one who through the world was created, making that creator part of creation. This miracle of the Holy Spirit is an awesome and wonderful thing. Without the Holy Spirit conceiving Jesus, once again, we have no forgiveness of sins. Without Jesus conceived, without the Holy Spirit conceiving Jesus, there'd be no salvation one. No God who has only love for us in his heart because he put all the wrath of God on that substitute, flesh and blood and God substitute. We have no certain hope of God's constant care, no certain hope of resurrection, no eternal life. We have nothing good without the Holy Spirit because we can't have Jesus without the Holy Spirit. We can't have this one who is God and human being, two things in one at the same time, without the miracle of the Holy Spirit making it happen. We have nothing good without the Holy Spirit. But with the Holy Spirit, what do we have? We have a wonderful Christmas celebration that is going to be a joyful thing even if things go wrong. Because Jesus is born for us, we can't take a time machine and cancel out his birth. If it's really, in the end, really about Jesus, then we can be joyful even when things don't go so hot at Christmas. With the Holy Spirit, once again, we have Christmas, we have forgiveness, we have God's salvation, we have God's constant care, we have the certain hope of resurrection and eternal life. And we know, thanks to Jesus, there's going to be peace on earth one day. But things go even more than that with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit did conceive Jesus in the womb of Mary. But he also made this message known about Jesus, his birth his death, his resurrection. We talk about it in the Apostles' Creed every Sunday, all these things that the Lord Jesus did for us. But without the Holy Spirit, that would never have been proclaimed. What happened on Pentecost night? The Spirit came upon God's disciples so the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ could be proclaimed and it would not be kept a secret. But the work of the Holy Spirit even extends further than that. It's a great thing that the word of God, the gospel of Jesus is proclaimed and the Holy Spirit works that in humans to do that. But even more than that, it's only by the Holy Spirit that we can believe that message. The scripture says that the gospel is actually foolishness. It doesn't make sense to human beings. And I'm going to tell you, it doesn't make sense that a virgin conceives and bears a child. That's a mystery, a miracle. And some people would say nonsense. But the Holy Spirit does not just conceive Jesus in the womb of Mary. The Holy Spirit conceives faith in Jesus in our heart. That is a miracle also. Without the Holy Spirit conceiving that faith, all that Jesus did and the message of what Jesus has done would be nothing to us. But the Holy Spirit has made this conception in our heart so we can enjoy these blessings and enjoy our salvation and, yes, even enjoy Christmas. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate spirit of Christmas. The other spirits are fine. They are great. I don't want anybody to say pastor's against the spirit of Christmas. He's against family, against children. No! But the ultimate spirit is the Holy Spirit when it comes to the spirit of Christmas. So here's the question. How do you know you have the Holy Spirit? Well, pretty soon, in 30 seconds, we are going to speak the Apostles' Creed. And if you really believe what you say in the Apostles' Creed, you have the Holy Spirit. The miracle of faith is happening in you. Amen.
Holy Spirit can see. Amen. Let's rise and speak the Apostles' Creed.